Thanks. Is that kind of production what you expected from this group of guys? Uh, we're confident in our group all the way around. Um, and so, yes. Now, to that level, I think it was pretty extreme, and I hope they can continue to do that. Um, hitting 700 or 800 off the bench is pretty exceptional. And so hopefully they can continue to do that. That'd be nice. What'd you, what'd you see from some of the younger guys? You know, AJ and Austin both had some pretty good hits in the second game. What'd you kind of see from them and Jack Kruger? I think all the freshmen we saw, there were bits of nerves. And there was uh, really, uh, they showed some, some really plus outings too. Um, all the freshmen, including Matt Crook, you know, uh, not easy for a freshman to go out there. And the first ball that he throws out there, I think ended up being an error. And he battled his way through the outing where, you know, he was on the ground quite a bit. And I don't know if we played fantastic baseball behind him. He probably could have had quite a few. Uh, he probably could have gone complete game had we played clean defense behind Matt for his uh, first college outing. It was pretty spectacular. You talk about the battery between him and Kruger. Was there any struggles, the freshman combination? Is that going to continue? Or do you think you're going to throw something like Sean Chase or Josh Graham back there? To be honest with you, I don't think there was any struggles with Jack and Matt. Um, I do think. Uh, Jack did a real nice job catching Matt that day. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, it was really sloppy. Matt's Now, Matt's got some pretty wicked stuff, too. He's going to bounce some balls. He's going to have some, um, you know, some pitches are going to get away from him and so forth. That just goes with him being as good as he is with his stuff, first-round kind of stuff. Usually those first-rounders, and we saw it last night, even uh, in the Fullerton USC game with Philip Bickford, who was drafted a little higher than Matty, and he came in, I think he threw a ball to the backstop and, and then uh, walked a guy and threw one away as well. And so, you know, those guys with those big bodies and great arms at this young age, it's they haven't really figured things out entirely quite yet in terms of the command, but the stuff is just electric on those guys. Talking about the catching position, I mean, you guys rotated a couple guys this weekend. Is the ultimate goal to get kind of one consistent starter there, or are you okay rotating as the season goes on? Well, I mean, our coaching staff feels great in all three catchers that we have. Um, you know, offensively, I don't think that they killed it or anything like that out in Hawaii. I think Josh had a couple of hits, and the other guys came out with a goose egg. But, um, you know, on the first game of the series, I think Jack Kruger ended up being pretty much the player of the game with the way he caught. Um, blocking balls in the dirt and doing the things that he did were fantastic. Narrowing it down to one guy, I mean, even on uh, Monday when Sean Chase caught uh, Jeff Gold and the other guys, he did a fantastic job. Um, you know, if one kid did end up uh, running away with the job, it wouldn't surprise us. You know, Josh Graham's got tremendous talent back there, and we've seen glimpses of all three of those guys uh, being just electric behind the dish, but we feel comfortable with all three of them. So you're staying flexible, though. It could be multiple guys. It could be one. It just depends how it plays out. Sure. And with our bench, too, we may, uh, you know, if those guys catch fire, they'll hit for themselves. If they don't catch fire, we'll have options and be able to rotate uh, more than one catcher through, for sure. Let's say, does that bench play give you some lineup? Options, or do you like kind of having those guys if they're pretty comfortable and doing well off the bench? Kind of like having them there. Yeah, it's nice. And you know, in one of the games, we were down by two runs there in the ninth inning, and we were able to load up, I think, four or five different left-handed hitters in a row with a right-handed closer for Hawaii. And I think that was a big difference. Um, you know, in the past, uh, last couple of years, especially, we've been right-handed heavy, and you know, you get in a latter part of the game where those bullpen arms get tough and. Uh, you don't have the ability to match up in a great way. Uh, it does make scoring runs a, a, a real challenge, and it's it's hard enough as it is with the BB core and the good pitching at the end of the games and college ball now. But um, you know, to have that flexibility is really uh, a plus for sure. What do you think about Merriman? Well, I tell you what, I just got done watching video of Colin uh, Wellman again, and you know, he's as good as they get on a Friday night. He beat us here at PK Park last year. He's a three-pitch guy. He's up to 91, 92 miles an hour with a really plus changeup and a good breaking ball. Um, he'll, he's a Pac-12 any league Friday night arm, and he's going to be a high draft. Um, he's as good as they get. I think their pitching is old and very good. Um, they've got quite a few young guys now on the field, but I mean, uh, you know, they've got a shortstop, a young kid, freshman kid named Fletcher. He'll probably be on the USA team. He's that good um, in Southern California. He was, um, or anywhere, possibly the best shortstop or one of the best shortstops for sure in college baseball this year. He was that good. Uh, they got a good young group. They're going to fight and play scrappy and hard. Their coach is Jason Gill, who was on staff with Coach Horton, and he's in that Titan family of coaches, good friend of mine as well. Those guys know what they're doing. It's going to be a hard-fought deal. You know, I think if we play the way we did on Monday, we'll be in for three really hard-fought games. Um, you know, if we play sloppy and all that kind of stuff, this club's going to take advantage of our errors and miscues. Um, 
without a doubt in my mind. Do you feel like the errors are more, was that kind of you guys, or was it, and you mentioned the conditions over there, was some of it the conditions, some of it you no. guys, some of it? It was us. Yeah. You know, the only uh, conditions part of it was the home plate area on the one, uh, the third, or the second game when Matt Crook was throwing and so forth. Uh, that was the third game. When Matty was throwing, it was raining, it was awful sloppy. And so, you know, the home plate area was just a mess. Um, and so there might have been a little bit of that, but the rest of it, oh, that was us. We played poorly. We didn't uh, catch the ball extremely well. I know our guys took a chip on their shoulder going into Monday's ball game and felt like there was a lot to show the people, at least that were watching, especially in Hawaii, that mm -hmm. that were a lot better than that. How, so, special, how special was George Hoyden's 900th win for you guys? It was awesome. And, you know, for a lot of my career, I've spent it on the other side of the field watching George's teams play and his dugouts and just the energy that he's brought. And he's very well known as, uh, you know, one of the best college baseball coaches in the entire country for sure. And, um, you know, when he got that win, uh, it was really special because at the end of the game, we uh, always, coaches' traditions, always to have a game jersey to identify the player of the game and so forth. And it was identified that day to um, J.B. Bryant, who actually his father played for Coach Horton back at Cal State Fullerton. Well, J.B. in turn, as that uh, honor was given to him, turned around and said, oh, on behalf of the team, we're giving this to Coach Horton for your 900th win. And, it, you know, it was, a, it was a really neat moment for Coach and for all of us. It was cool. How did he take that? What did he say to the team about that? Uh, he was excited. Um, he probably got a little bit emotional as well. Um, you know, he talked about all the people that were in his life um, to be able to, to teach him the game, the Wally Kincaids of the world, and all the other great coaches that he's been around and the players that he's been around to be able to, to get him that many wins. And you can tell that, I mean, he absolutely loves the people that have come through his life. And, you know, the Dave Serranos of the world. And, I mean, it's such a thick list that uh, – that coach was really touched by, you know, not only that, but even afterwards, the people reaching out to him, either via text or the Twitter or all the kind of stuff that they do, uh, he was really excited. So, so Nick Catalano had the finger injury in the second game. How's he doing? He's doing good. Got the x-rays back today. They were negative, uh, which was kind of expected that it wasn't going to be anything more than just a, basically a, a bad bruise. Um, even on Monday, he was taking batting practice, and he was able to throw the ball better from the outfield and so forth. He he should be fine and ready to go this weekend. As, you know, aside from him and uh, Bumgarner, it kind of seemed like you guys were rotating a lot of guys in and out of the outfield this weekend. Do you guys kind of have an idea on who's you know looking locked in for that third spot, or is it kind of like catcher where you guys are kind of okay with? Well, we've got we've got some depth, and you know we're going to give the guys an opportunity to figure out who's going to win a spot and so forth. Uh, throughout our scrimmages during the fall and the spring, Tyler Baumgartner uh, really excelled, and so he's going to have a very long leash. He's done that well. Same with Mitchell Tolman and Kyle Garlick and so forth. There's a few staples for sure, Aaron Payne. Um, Heineman didn't have an exceptional weekend. He kind of broke out on Monday there a little bit. He had some hard luck swinging the bat a little bit. I think he'll probably have some much bigger weekends coming up. Um, but I don't know. In terms of the depth that we have in the outfield, we've probably got about three or four other guys that are inter interchangeable matchup possibility, or if somebody like a Connor Hoffman wants to run with the job, then we're all for it. You know, any any one of those guys that wants to take off with their opportunity and show that, you know, not only do they just want to get in the game and, and play hard and do the right things that they have been doing, but really excel and take off of the job, shoot, we'd be fine with that as well. If not, then we'll continue to platoon and do what we need to do matchup wise. These guys talk about having kind of more balance in the offense, not waiting on a Ryan Healy type thing this year. Did you see that this week with the bench and with the guys that are out there that this does have capability to be a lot more balanced kind of throughout the order? Well, it's going to have to be. You know, it's going to have to be because Ryan obviously is a huge bat. He was one of the best hitters in the entire country, power-wise and so forth. Hard to replace a guy like that. And you even see that up the road with uh, Conforto as him being probably the, the premier offensive player in the entire country. We knew that coming out of high school, and he's proving it all the way through his college career and after a great first week in a Pac-12 player of the week, still doing it. Uh, for us, the answer is going to be clearly about um, – you know, being more athletic, I think we are more athletic. We can run the bases pretty well. Um, did that very well in Hawaii. Uh, look to continue to do that as a staple as coaches program. So I think we ended up stealing some bases in some critical spots and putting us in a position to score some runs. And I think that's what you're going to see out of this club. You guys envision running as much as you did uh, in Hawaii for the rest of the season. I think you guys had about 13 stolen bases in those four games. Well, it depends. You know, you got to get counts. You, you got to have combinations and stuff like that. And we had some of it. And ironically, we didn't have some of our best runners uh, out there on base from time to time. So, 
Uh, I'd like to be able to go 13 stolen bases a week, and I don't know, though. You know, I mean, you're talking about a really good schedule of people that we're playing against where, you know, um, sometimes you don't have the opportunity to run as much as we did this weekend. Uh, it's part of our game. We're going to do what we do, and some weekends we're going to have weekends like that on the base pads. Hopefully we just run the bases smart and well.